Earthquakes! The latest space weather update on CMEs and potential solar flares. The international COVID update, including the travel ban for Israel, now including Russia and Argentina. The Israeli government update, in which Bennett now agrees to form a government with Lapid. The United States is in talks to impose sanctions on Ethiopia. Meanwhile, Iran and Hezbollah congratulate Syria's Assad on his election victory, while the UN is launching an investigation into whether Israel or Hamas committed war crimes. The UAE-Israel relationship is in flux after Gaza, but presses on. And finally, the French Navy intercepts a supersonic target. Let's talk about it. Brother Wayne here from Alabama. This channel is all about world news and how it correlates to biblical prophecy. Well, if you're new to this channel, I would strongly urge you to subscribe to receive daily news updates on what goes on in the political and how it corresponds to the spiritual. Well, if you're coming back to my channel, welcome back. Today I want to jump right into Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 is such an important chapter for anyone that's studying biblical prophecy or that has just become awakened into the biblical prophecy and what's going on in the world. And I really just want to focus on two simple verses in which Jesus was responding to the disciples and they asked him simply, Master, Jesus, Teacher, what are the signs of thy coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus responded in what has been known as a famous, famous, a discord here on the end times, ranging from the signs of the times all the way till the end. However, in Matthew chapter 24, I just want to share with you some light in which Jesus was describing the end times. And I really want you to take a hard look, if you're not aware of the end times that we're in, and see does this fit the current situation we're facing. Okay, starting in verse 6 in Matthew chapter 24. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. You see, one of the things that Jesus is really trying to teach each and every one of us is that in the end times there are going to be countries and even people or ethnic groups fighting amongst themselves. Are we seeing that in the world today? What about what just happened between Israel and Hamas? Where would that fit, fall into this category? Or what about the wars and rumors of wars that we've been hearing? Remember, you, you know, you hear all kinds of things. USA, Russia. Uh, USA, China. Russia, China, Russia, Iran. Um, then all of a sudden you start hearing about Tibet, or maybe it's even as simple as Taiwan or Hong Kong, or even recently what we've started to hear kind of in the chatters in the news and online, and a Google search would get you there, would even be Australia. Who would have thought Australia would be such an important piece? But wait, there's more. What about the Arctic? Remember just, just last week where I reported where Russia said that they would shoot uh, and knock the teeth out, basically, of the United States if they messed with them in the Arctic? Hmm. It really makes you stop and think, what is really going on behind the scenes? Is it a land grab? Well, maybe not that much, but what about the water? We just recently have heard about Turkey threatening to cut the water off. In the Middle East, we've heard, of course, you've got the Ethiopia uh, with, with that water. W what about Egypt in that water crisis? What you're starting to see is that the wars, rumors of wars and wars, seem to be water wars now. Where is the water going, I might ask you? Another question to be answered for a different day. But when in verse 6, and ye shall hear of the wars, right? We are hearing of the wars. We know there's fighting going on. And rumors of wars. Rumors of war that could start with such and such closes this dam on the Euphrates or this dam on the Nile. Think about that very closely. But remember, hey, that has to dry up, right, in the tribulation period. 
But all these things must come to pass. The Lord tells us all these things must come to pass. In other words, there's nothing you can do that's going to stop it, but the end is not yet. Very, very important. The end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation. Okay, so nation against nation. Think about it just in simple terms. United States, China, a lot of rhetoric going back and forth, right? Nobody can deny that. Uh, United States and Russia, a lot of rhetoric going back and forth there. What about Israel and Iran? I mean, enough said there, right? So you're starting to see more and more of this. And kingdom against kingdom. Hmm. You know, when you start looking into these things, um, in this verse, it actually even goes back to ethnic group versus ethnic group. And, you know, in other words, look at the United States, just, in, just for the Americas, Republican and Democrat. Such a far divide, yet it seems like they don't have any common ground anymore, right? But it's not, it's not just them. Look in Israel with the, with the forming the government, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. They've had four elections. They still don't have a government. They might have one coming soon, though, but you can see that they're against one another. Okay, now what about, and we're going to talk about the Syrian elections and where Bashar al-Assad received 95% of the vote, or right at 95%, I should say. I thought I, the number I've seen was just a little bit north there at 94.1. However, you, you look at this, look at Russia. Remember, you know, Russian and Putin in power, right? You know, many of these, Xi Jinping in China is another example, where you actually have lifetime rulers in, in certain areas. And then some say that they would like to be the lifetime ruler, but that's going to you know come to pass at a later time. And it says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. We are in the midst of sorrows. Look at this world. Think about the coronavirus as it's just a, hit the whole globe, right? No one on this planet arguably does not know about the coronavirus. There is some exceptions, and I get that. However, can you see how a birth pain of the coronavirus going across the world should just shake and wake people up? Can you see where people should start to be paying attention to what's going on? I, re I really hope you can see that. Because remember, this is the beginning of sorrows. Nothing has to happen for the rapture to take place. It comes down to one simple question. If you were to die today, or if the rapture of the church happened today, do you know if you would go with Jesus? Do, have you given your trust and put your faith in Jesus Christ being the Son of God, being in his death, burial, and resurrection? Know that he is the Son of God. He died on the cross for your sins and for mine, and that we are forgiven. We are only forgiven of our sins, which we commit every day, by the blood of Jesus Christ. It is that simple. That is the gospel of salvation. Remember, no man shall boldly approach the throne of grace or mercy by his own works. It is only through the finished work of Jesus Christ should any man boast. It is not about you and me. It's about what Jesus has done for us. And when we put away our pride and we put away our are just our egos for a second, and we realize we are a vulnerable people, right? We are very vulnerable to each and everything on this world, in this world, and coming upon the face of this world. Where are you at in your salvation? Are you doing something today for the kingdom of God? I sure hope so, and if you're not, I strongly encourage you to pray to God and, and, if you, and if you really don't think this is for you, that, that Jesus and God and you just really don't know, I'm going to ask you to take a small leap of faith today and pray and ask God to reveal himself to you. That simple. Between you and him, say the prayer in your head and watch the doors that he can open in your life. So now let's jump right into the latest earthquake report. And there have been 37 earthquakes greater than 2.5 or greater from the USGS uh, within magnitude. Now, a couple I really want to point out to you today. Dollar Point, California, 4.2. Very, very big there. 4.9 in Colombia, 4.6, and a 4.8 in the Philippines. 5.1 in Vanuatu. You know, 5.0 in Afghanistan. No major earthquakes. 
and the number has decreased now down to 37. The pressure is building. It's in what seems like a recurring theme on this channel. There is a major earthquake watch going on. It seems like we should be under one always. The 37 earthquakes is allowing pressure to build. So play, pay very close attention to what is going on. Remember, the pressure must release that is being absorbed Okay, from, from different levels of energy and radiation coming into the earth, being um, dissipated to the poles, and then as actually the earth is absorbing some of the radiation, the earth is now going to emit some radiation, which is no surprise. And when you see this, the earth has to release these, this energy. And to release this energy, the earth can do it in the form of earthquakes and or volcanoes. Think about releasing pressure, releasing energy energy. So now I want to jump right into the space weather update and it is very very important here because this is from spaceweather.com. The solar winds are now hitting the earth right this time at 441 kilometers per second which that is a little bit on the high end but but you know average. Okay so, but I really want to point out to you that on May 26 um, we had a CME impact. Um, that, that impact that it had on the earth is now subsiding here on the 28th. However, there's, it, we're going to have a little calm period here for just a little bit of time. And then on the 30th, in, in a couple of days, our planet is actually supposed to cross, and, and pay very attention to this, it's called a heliospheric current sheet. Okay, it's a, it's a solar boundary, basically. And there are talks that this could trigger geomagnetic activity. Now I've seen uh, discussions to where they say it would be minor. Um, however, I will say that since we have unusual conditions in the skies with radiation, on, with earthquakes, with pressure building, it could be more than a minor geomagnetic uh, disruptance. Um, however, you, no one really knows. They're just assuming and basing that upon kind of what they think. Uh, so pay attention to this. Pay attention for that major earthquake. It seems like that's really kind of falling into place as the earthquake numbers are dwindling. So space, weather, and earthquakes are closely linked as well as every story that I'll talk about today. But pay careful attention if you see anything impacting the earth. Okay, so now from the Jerusalem Post, one of the things I want to share with you is we talk a lot about the global coronavirus update. And I really want to start off today just kind of give you an update of where it's at because a lot of the news stories are kind of not really sharing it, particularly here in the United States. Now in Israel, from the Jerusalem Post, the ban, basically Israel has a ban on seven countries and they determine this by high coronavirus infection rates. And so they've extended the, their seven countries right now till June 16th. Well, you might ask, well, well, who are they? Well, they now include nine because they've added Russia and Argentina on the list. That also included Ukraine, Ethiopia, Brazil, South Africa, India, Mexico, Turkey. Israelis that return from these countries have to undergo a mandatory quarantine. However, the outbound travel to these countries is also banned. So they can come back, enter quarantine, but you can't go to that country. Next, from the Times of Israel, the EU now has given the green light to Pfizer for the vaccines for 12 to 15 year olds. One of the things that I just want to make note is that it must also still be approved by the European Commission before countries can kind of get the go ahead to giving the COVID vaccine to these adolescents. So more to come on that. However, they are in the process. They are making progress. Remember, all these types of approvals and regulatory bodies play a tremendous role in certifications and regulations before it can be applied, right? You just can't go give it to anyone. Next, from the Financial Times, one of the articles that I was reading was the U.S. stated the U.S. has the right to impose sanctions on Ethiopia. And so, basically saying that the current administration here in the United States, the Biden administration, is frustrated with Ethiopia, to say the least. And Washington has already imposed visa restrictions from Ethiopia. 
and basically saying that Ethiopia has taken no steps to end the hostilities in this what is now a six-month war in the Tigray region. Okay, so the U.S. is trying to put a little pressure on Ethiopia here to kind of get this situation under control. More to come on that. Remember, Ethiopia is part of the Ezekiel 38 war. And right now, you see friction between the U.S. and Ethiopia. Something to watch there. Okay, meanwhile, Rouhani, and this is from the Jerusalem Post, Rouhani, the leader of Iran, and Hezbollah now congratulate Bashar al-Assad in Syria for his election victory. And this is actually going to be Assad's fourth term, if you're keeping track. And they're claiming that this will be the great opportunity for Syria to play its natural and leading role globally and regionally. Hmm. They're now saying on this Jerusalem Post that the majority was 95.1. I know I said 94.1 earlier. This should come by no surprise. Many times, this is just a formality for any democratic country, particularly in the Middle East, um, when you have these types of elections. So no surprise, Bashar al-Assad is going to stay here in Syria. And so meanwhile, while you kind of having that going on, from Reuters, the UN, the United Nations, has launched an investigation into whether, the, whether Israel or Hamas has committed war crimes. Remember, they were battling out through the Gaza Strip, and the few casualties. You know, I, I've even I've, I've heard stories even from Behold Israel, and there's something I want to share with you. And Amir Safadi, he he gets complete credit for this. Uh, but just to show a the morale and just just the morals for the Israeli uh, military, just in general, they would actually send what would be a small rocket onto the structure that would just kind of knock on the roof that this building was going to be destroyed by bombs. So they would let them know that this is part of the infrastructure of Hamas and we're going to destroy this. If there's anyone in here, get out. And they, they've done this several times, but, but you see... There, there did all they could do, Israel did, to minimize the casualties, civilian casualties at that. So I'm going to be very curious where the United Nations Human Rights Council falls on this. Um, however, it looks like they are going to launch now the international investigation. So more, more really to kind of come on that. Um, we're, we're watching that closely. And then kind of as a direct result of that, remember, the United Arab Emirates supplied a tremendous amount of funding for the Gaza Strip and, 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 and the Palestinians. They, they, I mean, the, the number would probably shock many of you what it is because it's so large. Well, if you remember just a few months ago, the UAE and Israel had been talking a lot about um, working together about prosperity in the region, you know, and the UAE was a very critical um, focal point within the Abraham Accords. However, now when you have Israel and Hamas going in the Gaza Strip, it created tension, right? You can naturally see that tension would come back there. So now from the AP News, the UAE and Israel are pressing ahead with their ties after the Gaza ceasefire. And Israel's top diplomat to the UAE basically attended a ceremony in Dubai on the grounds for uh, basically a permanent exhibition to commemorate the Holocaust. And so when you see that the ceasefire is in place and it's working, that has allowed UAE and Israel to basically expand or to really kind of allow this relationship back and forth to mature. So we're going to watch this closely and see what happens here because the UAE government, if you, if you don't remember, expressed great concern over the violence and what was going on in East Jerusalem, as well as, remember, the storming of the Al-Asqa Mosque I talked about last week. Um, so be on the lookout. UAE is kind of in the middle here, and it's going to be very interesting if they're forced into an ultimate ultimatum moving forward. 
And what I thought was very, very interesting, you know, France goes and comes so much, it's really kind of hard to figure out what they're doing. But a French Navy, and this is from navalnews.com, a great uh, resource if you ever need something. Um, basically, the French Navy Horizon Air Defense Destroyer intercepted a supersonic target. Okay, let me just explain a little bit. The French Navy Marine Nationale announced that its Horizon Type Air Defense Destroyer intercepted a supersonic target during an exercise at sea. Very, very interesting. Um, they likely used uh, MBDA Aster 30 surface to air missile, missile during this testing exercise. You can see that you know supersonic testing or technology is now being employed by many countries across this world. You can see that this is a show of force. This is a show of capability. Um, in fact, when it's even announced in the public or even in the news media, it is something to just be aware of that it's already been developed and happened then, right? They wouldn't want to announce they're studying this and, and risk the possible potential of sabotage or even corruption while you're doing that. So it's mostly kind of kept quiet. So pay on the pay and look out for this because this is very, very important. And so last, I want to share with you, on, back, back to Israel and the government, the Jerusalem Post, Bennett now has, a form, has agreed to form change government with Lapid. And Yamina leader Naftali Bennett agreed in forming a coalition government with Lapid, N12 reported. And this is from Jerusalem Post. The two sides have agreed that Bennett will serve as the first prime minister until September 2023, and Lapid will take over until November 2025. The swearing-in ceremony is expected to take place in 10 days following an announcement of a new government either Saturday night or Sunday. Now, I will share with you this. Just look up. Yeah, redemptions draw a night. I, I, I share all that because remember when we talked about previously about Rabbi Kaduri's prophecies regarding the nation of Israel. Now, they're extra biblical prophecies, and I've talked about that here on this channel. But I want to just share with you that if this occurs, Rabbi Kaduri's prophecy is, is, um, is, is still holding true. Um, as far as what it would take to get here. But remember when he cut off and he said he was told that he couldn't reveal anything else? We're in that time period now. And then you have the prophecy of the 70 shepherds of Israel. If this does take place, it says and shows that the 70 shepherds of Israel's uh, prophecy, uh, extra biblical prophecy, will be deemed invalid, false, if this takes place. So stay tuned. We're going to watch that. You know, as we're in this season, we're in the season of change, right? And anytime during the season of change, you must remain flexible. You re must remain tolerant to things going on around you so you can adapt and be as efficient as possible. These things are going to take place around us. These things are going to happen. In fact, these changes are really going to happen whether we like it or not. The most important thing for us is that are you ready as well as am I ready for the return of Jesus Christ? He's coming to get his bride. He's coming to get us very soon. Remember, Jesus gave us clear, clear directions in Revelation 22, uh, chapter 22, that I, I just want to read with you as we leave here today. And here it is, Revelation chapter 22, verse, let, we're going to start in verse 17. And the Spirit and the Bride, the Holy Spirit, the Bride of Christ, say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that a thirst come. And whoever will let him take the, free, the water of life freely. And then in verse 20, And he which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen, even so, come Lord Jesus. There is going to be a time in which the Spirit and the Bride in unison will say, come. Are you ready for that time? Are you ready 
for Jesus to come back. I'm going to leave you with that thought today. Well, once again, this is Brother Wayne from Alabama. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Lord willing, I'll see you next week. You have a great day.